The other day I was re-watching Kill Bill and I was admiring the way the film looked. Mr. Tarantino prefers to shoot on good old fashioned film, probably because he finds it to have more character. Dehancer is a plugin for DaVinci Resolve that makes your digital footage look like genuine film. Hey, it's John Bear, so happy to see your beautiful face and today I will demonstrate to you the Dehancer plugin. I will show each of the effects individually and show you how they look as well as showing you how they all look together so that you can decide if Dehancer is something for you. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a mini tutorial of how to implement Dehancer into your workflow when working with DaVinci Resolve. I will share with you the settings that I prefer and then I will tell you if I recommend Dehancer personally. I will be adding timestamps down below so you can easily skip around in the video to find the part that's relevant to you. First up, film stock. Now Dehancer does not pull any punches. Included in this plugin are 62 different film stock overlays. Each one of them is unique and emulates an actual film stock. They range from subtle to extreme to black and white. I'm just gonna tell you straight away, my jaw dropped when I saw the black and white film stocks that Dehancer has on offer. When using the black and white film stock, along with all the other effects included in this plugin, you get this incredibly authentic looking black and white film. It just simply doesn't get more authentic than this. So straight off the bat, if you want to make black and white films, then Dehancer is the tool for you. You can just shut off this video right now and go buy it. A lot of people think that you can make black and white footage simply by taking away the colors, desaturate the thing. But I'm gonna show you side by side, black and white from Dehancer with all the effects included, as well as just simply desaturated footage. And I'm sure it'll be obvious to you which one looks better. Next up is film grain. Now, if you don't know what film grain is, it's easiest just to look at these examples and you'll see exactly what it is. It's this grainy sort of effect that is on your footage, which is very characteristic of old films <laughs> because they were all shot on film. Adding film grain to footage is nothing new. It's actually very popular, but I believe that the film grain from Dehancer is superior because they don't simply overlay the grain on your footage. They actually recreate the whole image out of film grain and it just looks oh, so good. It's important to note though that with film grain, a lot of the times when you upload it online, the compression of certain website will absolutely just crush it. For example, earlier today, I uploaded some test footage of my layover in Munich with the whole Dehancer shebang added on top. The Facebook compression just absolutely removed all the personality from the clip. I hope that YouTube does a better job of showing the film grain. If not, then Vimeo is probably your best option. All of this said, this is all 4K footage, so I hope that you're watching on a 4K display to properly appreciate the film grain. Next up is Bloom, and I'm sure you can see what Bloom is all about without much explanation. It's that nice glow that you get around the lights. Not long ago on this channel, I reviewed a Pro Mist filter, which is a filter you put on your lens to achieve a similar effect. But I have to say I'm very impressed with Dehancer and they make a pretty strong case for leaving the filter behind. If you can add the bloom in post, why would you ruin your footage when you're filming it? Although I'm sure that actually having a filter will make it look more realistic and organic. Either way, if you're not a fan of putting a filter in front of your lens and burning the bloom into your footage, then having the bloom as an option in Dehancer is super nice, especially because you can tweak the intensity, which you can't do if you're using a filter. Next up is halation. Now, since I've never filmed with an actual film camera before, I will admit I did not know what halation was. However, when I added it to my footage, I instinctively recognized the effect from older movies. Basically, what it is are these outlines around high contrast areas. You can see it here on the shine of the saxophone. But even though it's subtle, I believe that it's one of the key features of Dehancer when you put it together with all the other effects. It really helps bring home that film look. Next up, we have some more minor effects. We have the vignette. This one does not need a lot of explanation. Vignette is basically the darkened edges on your footage, which is often associated with the vintage look. Next is film breath, which adds subtle inconsistencies in color and exposure to further emulate the imperfect film. And finally, Film Weave emulates the movement in film when you're playing it in your projector. Many of these effects are subtle, but Dehancer truly shines when you put them all together. However, Dehancer also recommends keeping the effects subtle for a subliminal film feel. 
But if you want to go crazy with the effects and make it all look very then go for it. Now that you've gotten a proper introduction to Dehancer and all that it offers, I'm going to show you how to apply it in DaVinci. Once you have installed Dehancer and verified your activation key, it will appear as an effect on the color page. And this is very important, you need to add it to the last node of your color grade. In fact, I found that my footage looked the best when I've done all my normal color grading first and treat Dehancer as a icing on the cake. If you're familiar with color grading, then you know that you first correct the footage and then you do your artistic color grade. So Dehancer takes the spot of the artistic color grade. So I still suggest correcting all your footage first before applying Dehancer. Now at the very top of the Dehancer node, you'll find something called camera profiles, which actually allows you to transform the color space of your footage. And Dehancer supports a wide range of cameras. However, I found that it's best to just transform all your footage to Rec. 709 and then feeding that into Dehancer. Even though Dehancer is applied last, I do suggest going back to your first notes to tweak them once you've found the film stock that you like. Usually the white balance needs a little bit extra tweaking to get the most out of the film stock that you've chosen. Now for film grain, I've decided to share my preference because I found that the default setting of the film grain was a little too aggressive. And the sliders here can be a little confusing, so I'm gonna share my findings with you now. So here are my settings. I leave the resolution at zero because it seems to me that film resolution sharpens the grain, which is not something I want. For size, I leave it at one, which is the lowest value. But then I control the amount of grain with the amount slider. And I found it looks best at around six. And the default was 20, so you know, a little aggressive. However, if you're stubborn and you want that film grain to really show on your Facebook and YouTube uploads, I would recommend to put the size to something else, like maybe five, six, 20 even, go nuts. As for the other effects, I prefer to keep film breath and film weave off if it's a handheld shot and on if it's a locked off shot. Because it doesn't make sense to me to add more irregularities to an already handheld shot. I'd much rather have these effects on a locked off shot where you can actually appreciate the subtle personality that it adds to the footage. As for bloom and halation, I leave it mostly on the default setting, but it might be a little aggressive for some, so, you know, play around with it, have fun. And there you have it, my personal preferences for Dehancer. Now, I really recommend that you follow Dehancer on Facebook because they often post examples from other people that use the plugin with the instructions of how to emulate their look, which is quite cool. Now, there's one question remaining, and that is, who is Dehancer for? If you're somebody that really likes the vintage look, then Dehancer is absolutely for you. Dehancer does such a great job of adding the subliminal feeling of watching older vintage footage. As for what specific projects to use Dehancer for, I'd recommend it for marriage videos, travel videos, as well as, of course, narrative films. And the reason I say that is because with marriage movies and travel films, you're remembering a happy time in the past, right? So adding that vintage subliminal feeling to it makes it feel like a memory, which I think is awesome. I think Dehancer will benefit a lot of wedding videographers. And of course, adding Dehancer to narrative films, I mean, it's self-explanatory. You wanna make a film look like film stock. Maybe you're somebody who agrees with director Tarantino's philosophy, but you like the convenience of using a digital camera. Now, finally, it's important to note that Dehancer is very demanding on your system, probably because it recreates the image out of film grain. So you can expect it to slow down your render times quite dramatically. And for this reason, I recommend it if you have a dedicated editing machine. You need something beefy. The price for the full suite is $399, making it a bit of a steep price for most people. But the main stuff is still found in the light version, which is half the price at $199. The main thing that's missing is the halation effect. I believe that Dehancer is the best plugin on the market if you want your footage to look like vintage film. And so if that's your goal, then it's a small price to pay. Personally, I really like Dehancer and I will use it for my music videos as well as documentary stuff going forward. I will probably push the effects a little harder for the music video stuff while trying to keep it more subtle for the documentary and travel stuff. And finally, using Dehancer is just a lot of fun. So I give it two thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Once again, I'm John Bear. If you enjoy this, then please hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.